Hello and welcome back to the AI Weekly Debrief for the week ending December 14th, 2025. This week, the entire balance of power in AI shifted overnight. We have a Chinese startup, DeepSeek, that just humiliated Western math benchmarks, a massive change in how the US sells chips, and a $50 billion bet that India, not Silicon Valley, is the next AI superpower. We're covering these big stories for this week. So let's dive in. The biggest story this week comes from China. DeepSeek, the Chinese startup, released their new V3.2 models, and they did not just pass the test, they crushed it. On the Patna math competition, where the top human score is a 90, this AI scored 118 out of 120. It's effectively performing at a frontier level, rivaling GPT-5 and Gemini. The reason why it matters is because there is a huge controversy brewing. Reports suggest that DeepSeek might have used smuggled NVIDIA chips to train this beast, but regardless of how they did it, the gap is gone. China now has reasoning models that are just as good as the West's and they're doing it. The West-based companies are not sitting idle. This week, Google launched Gemini 3 Pro in India with a very aggressive price tag of just 399 rupees a month. They know the next billion users are in the global south. Meanwhile, OpenAI released GPT 5.2. But here is the twist. They stopped bragging about test scores. They introduced a new metric called GDP Val, measuring how much economic value the model creates. And for the open source fans, Europe's Mistral released Mistral 3 and a tiny version called Ministral for robots and edge devices. The race has shifted from who has the best chatbot to who can actually boost the economy. Now let's talk about the hardware that powers all this. In a massive policy reversal, the Trump administration just approved the export of NVIDIA's powerful H200 chips to China. But here is the catch. There is a 25% tax on those sales. The logic is called the economic statecraft. The US wants to keep its tech dominance, but also wants to take a cut of China's massive spending. ByteDance and Alibaba immediately started placing orders. The US government has decided that if China is going to buy chips, they might as well pay the US treasury for the privilege. But China is not taking the bait entirely. Just days after the US said yes to selling chips, Beijing said no to buying them for the government. China has blocked the use of NVIDIA H200s in government sectors, telling them to buy local instead. And they have the hardware to back it up. Huawei just dropped off the Kirin 9030 chip. It's built on a 7nm process and it's actually competitive with mid-tier global chips. We are seeing a splinter net in hardware, Western chips for private companies, Chinese chips for the government. It's not just nations fighting. Companies are rebelling against NVIDIA's monopoly. This week, Broadcom signed a massive $10 billion deal with Anthropic to build custom AI chips. Anthropic is tired of waiting in line for GPUs. They want their own silicon. Meanwhile, Intel is trying to claw its way back into the game by acquiring a startup called Samba Nova for $1.6 billion. The lesson here, if you are a big AI company in 2025, you don't just write software anymore you build your own brain. We are running out of power on Earth, so the race is going to the space. China just activated the world's largest distributed AI computing hub, a grid spanning 2,000 kilometers to process data across the entire country. In response, US billionaires are looking up. There are new plans for orbital AI data centers, putting 100 gigawatts of compute into space to bypass our failing power grids. It sounds like sci-fi, but when you run out of electricity on the ground, the only place left to go is orbit. Speaking of power, the grid is straining. Memory chip prices have tripled because the demand is so high, but we are seeing wild innovation to fix this. A company called Unconventional AI just raised nearly half a billion dollars to build computers that work like the human brain, drastically cutting energy use. And the US Department of Energy has just dropped $20 billion into using AI to figure out nuclear fusion. We have to solve the energy crisis or the AI revolution stalls. If you are looking for the next gold rush, look at India. This week, Microsoft pledged $17.5 billion and Amazon pledged over $35 billion to build AI infrastructure in India. India is positioning itself as the neutral third pole, not America, not China, 
But the leader of the global south, they're also proposing a law that would force AI companies to pay royalties to content creators. If that passes, it changes the business model for the whole world. The US versus the states. Back in the US, we have a civil war on regulation. The White House issued an executive order to block individual states like California from making their own AI safety laws. The goal, deregulation. They want one national standard to speed up development and remove bottlenecks. If you are a startup, this is great news. If you're worried about safety, you just lost your local protections. Around the world, everyone is trying something different. The EU is getting tough. They just sent out enforcement notices demanding companies reveal their training data. Australia went the other way. They released a national plan that relies on voluntary guidelines to attract businesses. And look at Singapore. They forced banks to use AI to detect fraud and scams dropped by 21%. That is proof that smart regulation can actually save you money. The internet is breaking apart. Russia just unveiled a plan for sovereign generative AI to make sure they never have to use Western models like GPT. Israel joined a US supply chain alliance called Pax Silica, and China is proposing a world AI coordination organization to rally developing nations to their side. We are moving towards a world where your AI does not talk to my AI because they live in different geopolitical fortresses. In the media world, the lawsuits are turning into partnerships. Disney just invested $1 billion in open AI. They want to use tools like Sora to make movies. But here is the irony. At the same time, they are shaking hands with open AI. They are sending cease and desist letters to Google for unauthorized use of their characters. The message is clear. You can use our IP, but only if you pay us a billion dollars first. We are also seeing the major laws to protect humans from the algorithm. Australia just banned social media for anyone under 16, specifically citing AI addiction. On the security front, a company named Savient raised $700 million to use AI to protect your identity. As deepfakes get better, providing, proving you're actually you is becoming a billion dollar industry. Meta acquired Limitless, an AI wearables company for safety and productivity integration. And India is amending the IT rules to mandate labeling of AI synthetic content. So where is the smart money going? It's all AI. 2025 set a record for seed funding and it's almost entirely AI startups. Two big winners, Serval and AI for IT support just hit a $1 billion valuation and Aru raised money at a billion dollar valuation to generate synthetic data. We are running out of human data to train models. So now we are paying companies to invent new data. If you are waiting for the new CD, you will no longer, you will have to wait longer. Leaks show Apple's big AI update is delayed until spring 2026. Apple is moving slow to get privacy right, but others are moving fast. Riyadh Air just launched as the first AI native airline. They aren't just using chatbots, they are using agents software that actually does the work from booking to scheduling. The era of chatting is ending. The era of doing has started. Another news, IBM acquired Confluent to feed real-time data to agents. So we have to address the elephant in the room. A new report shows that 71% of Americans fear AI will take their jobs and the data supports them. Companies are freezing hiring for entry-level roles and spending that money on AI servers instead. Time Magazine, named the architects of AI as person of the year. It's a recognition that this small group of people is now designing the economic future for the rest of us. So to wrap up this crazy week, here is what you need to take away. The gap is closing. China's deep seat proved that sanctions are not stopping them. Hardware is king. From India's $50 billion infrastructure boom, Russia's sovereign clouds. If you don't own the chips, you don't own the future. Three, the splinter net is here. The US. EU and China are playing by three different rule books. Think of it this way. We just lived through the moment the world switched from coal to oil. Countries are scrambling to secure the supply, building the refineries and blockading the trade routes. We are witnessing the industrial revolution of intelligence. With that we come to the end of the show. Please support our work by joining us as a member. All you have to do is go to the bottom of the description of this video and you'll see the link on how to become a member. And please like, share, and subscribe to the AI with our own show. Thank you for watching. We'll be back soon.